throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, Dear James, and together with the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we look at current energies, we take your questions and comments live, and we go as guided. We listen to the intuitive guidance from the Unseen, and we just incorporate everything together, and this has been quite an amazing journey. And for those of you that have been with us, From the beginning, you know it started last November 17th, uh, 2022, and we have been continuing on um, pretty much every week uninterrupted. So welcome, everyone. Place in the comments where that you're joining and where you're from. Welcome, Olivia. Wonderful to have you with us. Anne, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Yes, indeed. It always is. It's right. It's Wellness Wednesdays. It's Wonderful Wednesdays. It's a great day. It's right in the middle of the week, and it gets us going. And that happens to be a very interesting um, component of our main theme. And I'm just going to bring it up because it starts the show off right. Well, our main theme today is celebrate, celebration, celebrate. And it is a you can see the image, and, and yes, it's a little bit of Easter in there uh, because it is April and so forth, but it's also these beautiful, beautiful colors, jewel tone colors, pastel colors, the stars, and there was this beautiful piece about the fact that the unseen was saying to us, we are at the precipice, we are at that moment of celebration, of celebrating. And thereby, as well, it was a big reminder to celebrate. And because we forget, right? We forget. We're in the trenches. We're trying to get somewhere. We're trying to get out of something. You know, we're trying so hard at times that we forget the simplest pleasures, the simplest things. And one of them that we can do in any moment of any given day is to stop and celebrate. And again, it can be the smallest thing that we celebrate, which really isn't small, right? It's something really big. I mean, we just stop and, you know, Olivia was saying schizophrenic weather. And yet, we could celebrate that schizophrenic weather, right? We could stop and say, hmm, what is it about this that I celebrate? What will it bring? What's in the unknown of something? It can be simply, you know, there's poppies. California is experiencing because of, you know, I I forget how many atmospheric rivers. And I think up in the the Mammoth Ski Area, there's like 57 feet, feet of snowpack in the mountains. And so California has gone from almost a decade plus of drought to this kind of onslaught, if you will, of, of moisture, precipitation, water. Well. One of its celebratory beauties from that is this rare super bloom. And there are poppies, orange, yellow, you know, these mixed magentas. They're everywhere. The hillsides are green beyond green beyond green. It looks like Scotland, Ireland, Wales here right now. And so there's what this is talking about is this celebration. And remember, they talk to us about coming together, gathering together. And I'm going to show you. Um, and welcome, Alicia. Welcome, Colleen, Lorna, Kelly Marie, Endless Essences, Debbie, good morning and welcome. Good afternoon, wherever, good evening, wherever you might be around the globe. Um, but I want to bring this in because this was on, and as you know, I've been guided here. Um, to the Agoura Hills, Malibu area of California. And we've been tracking what's very interesting, tracking the the covers of the Malibu Times newspaper. And this came out right after last week's show. And up on your screen, you'll see the Malibu Times, it says tribes and cultures from from across U.S. celebrate 23rd annual Chumash Day. 
And the Chumash Indian is the native Indians that were here in this region. What's interesting about it is this entire article talks about the celebration, the gathering together, the unity. And again, this 23, this, and uh, we're going to get into the power of the number, this master number 23. It reminded me, you see on the left of your screen, the word utopia, and we've had this in, in previous shows, an imagined place or state of things in which everything is perfect. And there's something about the gathering together, the unity of native peoples with, and look at the beauty of their, their, I don't want to like, uh, regalia. I don't want to say costumes. Um, because they're authentic and they're native and they're incredibly beautiful and it and they're celebratory look at the colors so again back to the main theme the colors of the main theme this month that we're in and these beautiful jill tone colors and pastel colors and then you come into the image of the chumash tribe celebrating gathering together and the beauty in this article is they said sometimes this is the one time the only time in a year that we're able to gather, unify, share stories, celebrate, commemorate, look to the future, listen to the spirits, to the Divine Mother, to Mother Gaia, the Earth. And so this main theme of celebrate, celebration, allow it to permeate your being. Remember to incorporate it into and especially when things seem dark when things seem heavy dark stagnant oppressive by all means remember find something to celebrate find an image like this that says oh this in this moment it might just be a raindrop on the window it might be whatever it might be do on something or a little snowflake if there's still snow again there's still snow in, in northern parts and so forth so even though we're in the spring so find the beauty and celebrate it find the beauty within yourself and celebrate it because when we're in the trenches we forget we don't we forget to look up we forget to give ourselves a break pat ourselves on the back add a add a girl add a boy you know give yourselves that pep talk that celebration because of course that, that other saying, enthusiasm. With enthusiasm, it opens many doors. And so we have this, and look at the date, 4-12-2023. So this 4-12-23. And you notice that the 12, it's a tripling, right? It's a tripling down of the 4, which is foundational. They're saying on 4-12, the message is, celebrate celebration so there's this tripling down this multiplying of it amplifying of it and you're going to see we're going to talk about the number 23 let's just go there right now number 23 and it's a 23 you know 2023 and remember in some shows back um the unseen had said we're going from 12 to 13 22 to 23 and what does that mean and what, and this 11 to 42, we're going to leapfrog forward. So not to get lost in the numbers. 23 signifies new beginnings, revolution, transformation. When you look back at the shows, the unseen has been saying there was a show about new beginning. There was a show about revolution. The Pluto Aquarius, Pluto entering into Aquarius for the first time in 246 years, is a revolution. It was the last time it occurred was the French and American revolutions, the Industrial Revolution, the Age of Enlightenment. That's what happened the last time it was there. So you can see this revolution. What did they say last week? Metamorphosis, transformation or maybe that was two weeks ago, two weeks ago. But the point is, the number 23 signifies new beginnings, revolution, transformation. So realize, recognize, individually, 
especially collectively. Aquarius represents the collective. We are entering a seismic, cosmic, new beginning, revolution, transformation, metamorphosis. And you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to feel it. There's a lot of anxiety going on right now. There's a lot of people, clients, things around the globe where there's anxiety. And this is saying to us, see, this is what this year is about. Because remember, seven, because 2023 is a seven year, right? And seven, the foundation of God's word, divine fulfillment, divine perfection, divine completion. It's an ending of a way and a new beginning. The ending and the beginning are contained within the other. And so you can see right on schedule, right on time. It's like, it's like a beautiful, you know, Swiss clock or a a European train. Those trains leave on time. Okay. There's no, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. (laughs) You're, if it says it leaves at 707, you, you, you better be there and be on, on the train because otherwise you've missed it. It's not, there's no lollygagging. European trains, boom, they're just, they're on it. They leave on time, at least the TJVs and and so forth. Um, So let me bring in um, Olivia saying, I can celebrate the fact I slept really well Sunday night into Monday and felt like a different person. It happens so seldom, but I seldom remember how I felt since then, though uh, though not slept well since. So here's the thing. Because sleep is interrupted. Um, I love my sleep. Anybody that knows me, I need my my good solid seven, eight hours. I love sleep and it renews me. Um, What people have been experiencing, many people, many, many, many people commenting that their their sleep is interrupted or they're getting they're waking up at the same time. You know, it's like I'm waking up at three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning and I can't go back to sleep. And I'm feeling this uh, push-pull. <clears throat> so remember, again, we're being raised up. We're being illumined. We are being stretched to the limits, to the max. Pardon me for one second. Let me see if I can do this very quickly. We're Pardon me. Something. See an interruption. Okay. <clears throat> Everything's purposeful. They are interrupting us. They are interrupting our sleep. They are interrupting our habits. They, they, the unseen, the, the over, the, the, the host, the higher hand that's guiding all of us. It is not to fatigue us. <laughs> it is not to, to bring us down and forth. It's to lift us up. And so it's like, it's almost like that, you know, they're, they're showing me when you, when you pull a plant or something and you, you're going to repot the plant, you pick it up out of its container and you kind of, you know, lightly give it a little light shake or whatever. And a little bit of this and that falls off. And then you, whoop, and you place it into this new, bigger, grander pot or into the bed, you know, outside where you're going to plant it. And what do you immediately do? So that the movement, the shaking, the um, uh, destabilizing of where you've been is jarring. It jars us. It moves us. Um, It it awakens us. It's uncomfortable. And then all of a sudden, we're placed, and in this instance, we're placed into a higher octave. We're going to be placed, we are placed, not going to be, we are placed into a higher octave. And immediately, when you work with plants and stuff like that, there's the tending of the soil, but the the home, remember, the home, the location has already been prepared. We've already dug the hole or, you know, we've added any type of nutrients or subsoil type um, additives, nutrients, and so forth. It's pre-prepared, and we're lifted up, and we're placed into it. 
And then immediately, you know, the soil, the topsoil, the nutrients, it's nourished, it's cared for, it's immediately cared for. And the last thing is the water, you know, and we add some water and everything. And then what do we do? At least this is what I do. And I, so place in the comments if you do this as well when you're working with plants and stuff. Do you not stand back when that's done and smile? Does it not bring you immediate joy? That you stand back and you look at this, quote, new creation, this new limitless possibility, this new that you will derive joy and happiness from, benefit from, that you will celebrate, that you will talk to. It's this, this is the message. And it's to do this now. Do this in the now. Celebrate and celebration, this gathering together. See yourselves, see nature, see figurines, inanimate objects, whatever it may be, a piece of art, a person. See and celebrate them, that, it, now, in the present now. Because it's, it's the octave, you know, remember the ideal becomes the new reality. So it is the new reality. And watch with people. When you see, so, you know, their, their joy or the, the, the shirt or the blouse or something about them and you acknowledge it in the present moment, people light up. They just beam. And immediately, because you've recognized, you've celebrated, you know, namaste, I bow to the divine in you. I see the divine in you. It may be their smile. It might be their hairstyle. It might be whatever it may be. And the plant, you know, again, a piece of art, a bench, these objects, everything. The message is every celebration. Celebrate. I know Anne, we talk about this. She'll go out and talk with her cup of coffee on the front porch and she'll say, and she's like, good morning, good morning tree and good morning flower and good morning butterfly. It's a celebration. You're celebrating, and in doing that, you are celebrating yourself. You are reminded of the beauty of your own divinity, of your own joy, your own happiness. And so uh, let me just incorporate um, and welcome Elizabeth. And uh, Elizabeth is saying, I've been describing this feeling as being as if I'm getting sandblasted, removing all the old skin and layers of protection that I don't need anymore. Yes. So the shaking, you know, a little dusting off of the stuff from the plants or the uh, loosening up the roots from where they've been. And really think, get have the image of a potted plant. You go to the store, you pick up a potted plant or something, and they do tell you to gently separate at the bottom, like loose, because you see the roots have been in this container. And so they kind of form around and they form like almost like a base. And when you transplant them to a larger planter, to a permanent planter, to a bedding, they talk about gently loosening the, the roots so that they know. So is that jarring and uncomfortable and so forth? Yes. Is there a little trauma involved? Yes. And then, <laughs> but what it does is because they're no longer bound, they're no longer bound by the container that they were in. We should celebrate that. We, in, in our individual lives, every time we take a step like that, every time the higher, the host, the master weaver, the higher hand moves us, it will be this moment of, yes, there's some discomfort because we're going to grow. We're going to expand. So the sleep, agitation, sandblasting, all of these things, and that's being in the trenches, the moving about, the going is guided, or we think we're going this way and it, get, it gets blocked or closed off. Yes, because we're meant to go this way. And that can be uncomfortable, create discomfort. However, there's a knowing. There's always your intuitive knowing. And this, uh, and what I hope 
with the weekly wisdom and insights and these weekly gatherings and this weekly wisdom is your empowerment, it's our empowerment. It is to listen to our soul source connection, to go as guided, and especially when it's uncomfortable, heavy, dark, disappointing, triple down, celebrate, because celebration is going to bring joy. It's going to bring enthusiasm. It's going to reset us, realign us. It's going to, you know, they say clean your clock. It's going to reset your clock so that you're no longer in that container, that bound moment that you were in, that you were just in, because you did what was necessary in the moment to replant yourself, to to transplant yourself, to move yourself into a bigger container of opportunity, possibility, destiny. You did not choose to stay confined. You chose to grow. And that is powerful, powerful, powerful magic. Bringing up the image again. Celebration. Celebrate. I love this image. It's just, ugh. It's good. It, it's very, it makes me smile. It's very happy. Um, so let's go to the main energies. And Jennifer is saying, welcome, Jennifer. And she's saying, I would like to invite everyone to celebrate their non-birthday every day. It's such fun. Exactly. And, you know, make every day your birthday. This is, this is that point. It, it, exactly. Soul family empowerment. Lorna, amen. It is. And, and thank you, Jennifer. See, we can find something to celebrate. Every single day, every moment, it's choice. It comes down to choice. Finding the beauty in something in the present moment and celebrate it. Because every time you do, remember, every time you do, you're acknowledging and celebrating self, yourself, because you're mirroring it. I just saw a tree outside the window here and, you know, I see faces in the clouds and imagery in, in the, in the mountains and hillsides and the boulders and so forth. And exactly, Elizabeth, what a gift from source. And literally I'm looking and all of a sudden I see this entire being in the tree and it looks like it's just reaching out to hug me. The wind's like slightly blowing. You can see the eyes, the head, the full body. And it's just like this, Maybe it's like a teddy bear or something if, if you were to uh, try to put it into a different form. However, it's the tree out the window across the, the parking lot. And I just smiled and I was like, yes, exactly, that. It's that kind of magic. It's that kind of moment. It's that kind of celebrating. It's that kind of crazy. Um, and I'm good with that. <laughs> I hope you all are. Because again, it doesn't matter what other people think or believe. So in that, that kind of crazy, celebrate it. It's beautiful. It'll hug you back. It'll set up the tone. It'll shift your energy. And that's powerful. And that's empowerment. And that's also the ripple. Because all of a sudden, you got to bounce in your step. And people are paying attention. And they're noticing. And you're elevated. Your energy's elevated. And so look at these. You know, We've had up on the screen the, the main energies. Well, the four is all this month, youthful folly. Children believe, they can call it, we call it imagination. But children and, and the most elderly, if you will, see beyond the veil. They see through it. They have a childlike energy and essence to themselves because they're done for, you know, the youth haven't started all the heavy lifting, right? And the elderly have been in the trenches all that time, slogging away. So they, you know, they allow themselves the joy again. And so you can see these two ends, the, the beginning and the ends are contained within each other. So this youthful folly, try again. Do not be blocked um, obstructed, delayed, um, diminished. I'm trying to get the other word that I want where, where, where you, where you give up. Do not give up. Try again. Be youthful about whatever it is or step back enough just to see 
you know, if, if our face is up against the glass, I was in Manhattan one time. <laughs> I was with a dear friend. We were looking at something and didn't realize the depth perception on the on the storefront because it was two panes of double glass. And I walked right up and went wham and smacked the outside glass. <laughs> now, not my not my finest moment. However, the point being is sometimes we're looking too intently, too intense, too intensely. It's like it's like we are too fixated on something, and so we need to take a step back. Youthful folly, and then try again. And this is going to bring to me. I'm going to come back to this in a second because I want to jump to, I, they said to me the fifth thing, and it's the thing that we change. Yes, do not be dismayed. Exactly. The spirit, they said the spirit of the meaning, the stories, the scripts, and the truths, and then in capital letters underline, we tell ourselves. So spirit, source, and symphony, the unseen, the master weaver, the host, the universe is saying to us, be very mindful. And you will notice it, it's easier when you're listening to someone else, when they're talking and they are telling you a story, a truth, a script that they're not hearing. And they'll say, well, I can't do this in left. And, you know, and I know I can't, you know, this won't happen in left. Well, that's a story, a script, a truth that they are telling themselves. Which means, well, if that's the story, if that's the script, if that's the belief, you're telling yourself. And we do it very, you'll see how it's done very, um, a lot of times lightheartedly. It just comes out. Remember the spirit of the meaning of the tro- the stories the scripts and the truths you're telling yourself you're sharing because what you don't recognize is that is the spirit of the meaning of what you're saying and the spirit of the meaning is oh i can't have it unless or it won't happen unless or i'm not good enough to have or it never happens you know that old saying money doesn't grow on trees why not it's just something we got told it's a story a script It's something, it won't come to me unless I've worked really hard for it. Notice how all of those are negative, negative, negative. They're blocks. They're limiters. They're old containers. The new container? There is is no container. The new? No container. Limitless celebration, possibility, unity, opportunity growth, expansion. So they wanted us to be really aware, really conscious in our day-to-day moment of the stories and the scripts, the truths, the beliefs that we're telling ourselves consciously, unconsciously, and that we stop ourselves and re rewrite the story, rewrite the script, open up, put it in a new Um, opportunity. I don't want to use the word container, put it in a new opportunity because this is really important because they're making a a very large point of it's the story, scripts, and truths. We tell ourselves. We're doing it. They're not. Sky's the limit. True North, Soul Source Connection, Host, Master Weaver. There's nothing that can't be done, accomplished, You know, it's one of those things, anything's possible with or through God, source, spirit, symphony. Anything's possible. The limiter is us. So, bouncing back. That's a big one. I just want to, it's number five, representing change and advancement. Um, So we got youthful folly. We've got, today is the 12th. We've got this 12, this standstill release. And so see... Story, scripts, and truths, we tell ourselves, release them. This, we're being transplanted, trans, uh, transfiguration, transformation, metamorphosis. We're being transplanted, renewed. We've got seven, 2023 is a seven year, as we've said. We've got everything we need, armies, legions, 
correct discipline. It's to utilize things in the right manner. 14. When you culminate all, all of today's numbers, it's 14. Great possessing. Shine. Great possessing. Shine. Celebrate. Celebration. Unity. Opportunity. Limitlessness. The, it goes on. It's everywhere. When we see it in, in everything, everywhere, it's contagious. It's great possessing. Great possessing isn't just monetary abundance. It's abundance in every way, shape, and form. It's an energy, a feeling. It's something we embody and we radiate it out. And this came with a client um, recently. Wherever you are, and I mean this in the sense of where you are internally and everything. From this point, from this moment on, and, and I'm going to post this. It was, it was a part of, of the client's reading. It's also very important to everyone. And it's the Shania Twain song, From This Moment. It's a love song because she's met the person and she's marrying them and so forth. Well, now replace the, the marriage aspect, the marriage relationship aspect of the song with, from this moment on, you recognize your soul source connection. You recognize your connection to this limitless enthusiasm, celebration, possibility, this newness, and how from because you do not dim your light. That's the point of the song. Do not dim your light because from this moment on, great possessing, I'm going to shine. If it's too much for someone, that's okay. However, that's their issue, not yours. You shine. You, you continue to possess greatness. And as you do, as Elizabeth has said, this sandblasting, this falling away, things, people, places, things that don't resonate at that, that uh, frequency, that vibrancy, will fall away. Yes, that can be um, emotional. It can be destabilizing. And so potted plant analogy, yes, because we're stirring the roots. We're, we're coming into our greatness. And not everyone is going to measure in the same you know, category or the same state of being. And that's okay. Namaste. I bow to the divine in you. I see the divine in you. What I'm not going to do is dim my light, dim my greatness. Because when I do that, it causes dis-ease within me. There's a, there's a big piece here that's... And so shine your light, shine, shine, shine. Celebrate, celebrate, <laughs> celebrate. Do not give up. And the more you radiate, because, and it's, it's authentic. This isn't something inauthentic. What they are talking about is shine your light, be, and continue to radiate. Great possessing, celebration, shining. If someone's not at that level, with grace and humility and love, namaste and release. Because we've we've gotten see we got we've gotten bound up in all of these scripts, stories, truths we tell ourselves that keep us confined or down or held back or oppressed or suppressed. Okay, well, the host, the master weaver, the unseen is going. Yeah, well, I'm done with that. No more of that. And look at how that plays to the Aquarian age, the golden age. It's not the dark ages. <laughs> it's the golden ages. It's like, it's the, it's the golden arches. It's the, you know, it's the rainbows, the double rainbows. It is all of this. And it's magical and fantastical, and it's supposed to be. We're supposed to remember that. Children do. The most aged do. Because they've given up the ghost in the middle. They've given up all the labels and the stories and the, the truths and the... When people are on their, on their deathbed, on their transition, 
what they often talk about is their first, sometimes their regrets, what they didn't do, what they deeply wanted to do and didn't. Well, don't wait, don't, don't get to that point. Do these things now and celebrate them, celebrate you. Very important, I'm driving it home. I wasn't quite sure when we came in, when I was coming into today's show, I knew what they were saying to me. And yet there's, there is all of this dis-ease, discomfort, anxiety, sleep, sand, sandblasting, this shaking of the roots. And so in one, in one aspect, the human, James, was like, hmm, you know, that's bumping up against this dear James intuitive message. And what I remembered was, get out of the way, James. Get out of your own way. Step aside, because that's I'm sure that's ego, mind, personality stuff, stuff. <laughs> when the master weaver, the unseen, spirit source and symphony, soul source connection says, celebration, celebrate. That's what they mean. It's, it's not for me. It's not for us. It's not for our ego, mind, personalities. To say as the guest, we know better than the hope. The host is offering us the new, the direction, the way. And it's up for us. And then I got my little bear hug from the tree and I was like, okay, I got this. <laughs> I'll show up. And that's to say that is a choice. See, it's a choice. We are all placed in a position of choice. And it's the choices we make that thread, that form and thread our tapestry, our experience, our opportunity. And they're basically saying, they're not basically, they're saying, <laughs> celebrate, celebration, because there is a divine, they, they said unity, oneness, completion, divine fulfillment of the times. There is a fulfillment of the times. The number 23, we talked about 13. I'm tying all, all of this together. 13 signifies infinite life, death, rebirth, the cycle of that, the life, death, rebirth uh, cycle, endings and beginnings. The 13 is also, I'm going to just jump to it here really quickly. It talks about how the number 13 brings the test, the suffering and the death. It symbolizes the death to the matter or to oneself and to the birth to the spirit. So it's the death of an experience, the death of matter, something that matters or is physical. It can be also um, emotional, spiritual, mental. It brings about the death of it, the passage onto a higher level of existence. In tarot, the number, the 13th card is the death card. It mostly means death of a struggling period and new beginnings that follow. It, it talks about transformation. It doesn't mean that it's a literal death. It can be, but it doesn't. But most often, it signifies this cycle, this transformation, the releasing of something, the transformation of something, because it's signifying there's a death of something. In this instance, they're saying to us, the unseen has been saying to us, there's a death of the old way, the old times, the patriarchal era of rule. It's done. That train comes in and docks. It goes nowhere. It's finished. And we are to appreciate and celebrate and find the joy in that journey, in that experience. And then no longer be bound by it. Utilize it. We don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but we utilize it. We harness the best of it. We harness the shadow of it. I mean, we can see on the world stage, Pluto, Aquarius, the, the first time the, uh, the United States is exp uh, experiencing its Pluto return. Pluto, the opposite of the light. It's the, it's, it rules the underworld. And it's showing us, it's bringing to the surface everything that's not good. 18, decay, repairing what's spoiled. 
it's bringing it to the surface so that we can see it and purify it, temperance, transmute it. Because we don't, it's not going with us into the new, into the matriarchal, the harmony, the balance, the purity. It's contained within these. And, and the 13 is contained. It, it's very um, one with the divine feminine. In ancient cultures, the number 13 represented femininity because it corresponded to the number of the lunar menstrual cycles. So the lunar cycles, the menstrual cycles in a year. 13 times 28 equals 364 days. So, and the theory is that as the solar calendar triumphed over the lunar, the number 13 became anathema. See, it got demonized. It got co-opted. Don't look at the 13 because that will remind you of your divine feminine nature, your divine goodness, your divine celebration and nourishment, your life giving. So we're going to demonize the number. We're going to wipe it out. Oh, don't put a 13th floor in a building. That's bad luck. Oh, that number's bad. Bad, bad, bad. Now think about that in terms of the divine feminine. Mary Magdalene, this demonizing of the feminine. Yes, well, that era is over. It's, it's done. It's complete. And it served a purpose because, again, we need, we've got to be able to see when things are out of whack, we've got to be able to see what's out of whack in order to right the ship, in order to correct it. And painful, the, the being transplanted, transformed, that purging, that sandblasting, that purging, that release can be unsettling. However, there's joy. There's absolute joy in the renewal, celebration in the renewal enthusiasm in the in the new anything when we do that anything new leading up to it oh struggle try you know challenge but then we get there we walk through the fire and we get there and we're like celebration we stand back with the plant celebration joy happiness pat on the back job well done we did it look how much more beautiful pruning of trees you look at any landscaping, people's yards, whatever, and you can really tell, and it demonstrates the care that you have for yourself, for your home, for where you live, for your community, your village, your place of employment, your company. How do you care for it? How do you treat it? How do you nourish it? How do you... Bring it up. Raise it up. How do you raise it? We talk about this with children. It's the easiest thing, right? And it somewhat defies logic, right? There's this whole emphasis on teaching children. We were all children at one time. And you're taught right from wrong. You're taught manners and honor and character and and love. And you're taught these things. And then it's like you become an adult and you abandon them. You don't want to abandon them. You want to triple down on them. That's that's where we've gone astray. It's as if it's okay, lies, alternate realities, alternate truths, oppression, suppression. It's all a demonstration of how you care for yourself and others and in the in the whole of the whole so and the 23 so the 13 infinite life death rebirth cycle endings and beginning and you can see 23 signifies new beginnings revolution transformation cycles and we are moving we are moving from the 1222 to the 1323 the 12 the solar calendar. What was there before? Oh, 13. 
the lunar calendar, the feminine. <laughs> the 13 is also the M is the 13th letter in the, in the um, English alphabet. M, divine mother, mother, the matriarchal, M. And so you can see this higher octave. And these numbers, by the way, is number three on today's show. Three, unity, trinity, unity, oneness, completion. It's whole and complete. It is all in one. Think about, they're giving me this as well. Think about this in our life, uh, in procreation. Contained within the mother, the divine feminine, is herself and the, and the egg, the male via the seed, and the child, the offspring, the child. Unity, oneness, completion. It's whole and complete in one um, vessel. And that births new life. And so that's the beauty. It's a, it's a positive energy. The number 23, this number 13, they're positive. Um, in numerology, 23 is associated with the planet Uranus. The, this planet is known, it's the higher mind. So Mercury is our mental mind, how we think and express and so forth. Uranus is the higher mind, the, the mind of the, of, of the whole. And, and it's known, Uranus is expect the unexpected because Uranus wants to move forward, to evolve, to express in a higher octave. It doesn't want to go backwards. It's going forwards. It doesn't, it, it's already, it doesn't want to do what it's already done. Been there, done that. It's moving forward. Arc of destiny moves forward. It represents, so 23, it represents change, progress, innovation. Pluto and Aquarius, the industrial re revolution, the age of enlightenment, innovation, progress, change. In terms of numerology, the number three, 23 signifies new beginnings, revolution, and transformation. The number patterns hold a lot of positive energy and signify spiritual growth. So this is a revolution, a, transfer, a transformative moment, year, time, and we are leapfrogging. Remember from last week, we are going from an 11 to a 42. We are going to move. We're going to leapfrog forward. The image of the fool, the fool's journey, the journey begins anew. And you see the fool, what is a quantum leap? They're going to take this leap of faith, this unknown. And what's required? Be childlike because the journey begins anew. And children have great enthusiasm. They celebrate. They have great joy. They're not numbed or, you know, diminished by time or experience or, and really time and experience are the stories, the scripts, and the truths we tell ourselves because we apply a spirit of the meaning of the experience of the person, of the thing. We're doing that. We're the ones minimizing and dumbing it down. So um, Kelly said soul, power, uh, soul family empowerment, exactly. Um, Kelly Marie is also saying connect with nature, naturally empower, and, and it's natural empowerment. Absolutely. There's a reason because nature doesn't ask. She, she, she knows how to grow. And, and every being within nature, and that takes me back to the Chumash Indians and the celebration of their gathering. Native people, native peoples, aboriginal peoples. I walked, I, I went to the Chumash Museum. It's in Thousand Oaks, California here. And you're able to then walk on this massive piece of property, acres. Um, and I was walking, beautiful day, walking. And at some point I stopped. I mean, you just see, you know, like the massive hills, the boulders, all of the, the native trees and, and vegetation and everything, critters, the whole shebang. And I thought to myself, wow, 
what it must have been like for these native aboriginal peoples, humans, souls, to not to, to have to learn and discern how one with Mother Earth, the animals, the spirits, the stars, how they had to be one with that, be so connected with their intuitive sense, their divine feminine nature, to navigate this unknown. There's no roads, there's no hospitals, there's no police, there's no governments, there's no businesses and institutions and, you know, grocery stores and, no. It's all native. And in order for that to work, in order for that to flourish, you have to be one with it. You have to Watch the animals. Ah, are they drinking that water or not? Oh, are they eating or collecting on that plant or not? What is the spirit of the meaning? And through that wisdom, through that oneness, here in this moment, 23 years of when they've organized this, they come to celebrate it. They've been celebrating it since time immemorial. But the point is, is that they're, they're able to celebrate it because of a body of wisdom, because of a body of connection. And that is, and this number 13 and 23, this divine feminine, this Aquarian age, this golden age, they are imploring us we got a golden ticket. Remember, you've got the golden ticket. We are exceeding. We're going to exceed the big tent. We're going to take flight. We're going to move up. We are going to radiate, shine our beingness. And again, no matter what, do not let anyone, including and most importantly, <laughs> yourself, hold you back, hold you down, limit yourself, box yourself in, tell yourself a story, a script, a truth that prevents you from receiving, being, achieving this. It's what we had before. It's what these native peoples had before. Unity, oneness, completion. And they navigated it. I, I have it placed over, but we have quote unquote smartphones, right? And we're so quote unquote connected. People are living their lives. Oh, I'm at this place. And oh, look at my meal. And Oh, look at, and oh, look at, and oh, look at. They're so busy commenting, selfies, photographing, checking in, blah, 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 that they're not living. They're disconnected from source. You're disconnected from your soul. Now, a little, okay, yeah, you know, everything in moderation. Okay, a little bit. However, when that becomes your source, when that smartphone becomes your source, uh, it's not the original. Can it be helpful to navigate? Yes. To live by? Mm. I was going to say big question mark, but uh, for me, no. It's a tool. It's not the tool. The tool is your soul source connection. The tool is this divine wisdom, this divine feminine wisdom. And it is not to say in any way, shape, or form or diminish divine masculine. The divine masculine, the mind, had to know, listen, 
Divine Feminine, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. Ah, okay, now execute. Divine Masculine, execute. It's actionary. Mars, actionary. Venus, receptive, beauty, nourishment. So they had to know when to go hunt, when to be still. They had to know. So they're using the harmony, the yin-yang, the beauty, the balance of the two. In perfect harmony, perfect unity, perfect oneness, perfect completion. And they, and what did they do too? They migrated. They didn't stay stagnant in one place. They replenished Mother Earth. They knew, okay, at this the right place, right time, right everything. A time for here, a time for there, this season, that season. They moved with the times. So that by the time they cycled back to something, of course they were cycling forward. So as they returned, it was new. They were new. It was renewed. They were renewed. All in balance, all in harmony, nothing depleted, nothing diminished. Because that's the care they gave it, it, animals, Mother Earth, nature, spirit, which meant it's the care they gave themselves. Because they knew, remember, all these modern day things, they weren't there. So they knew that their survival, their thriving, their, their, their opportunity, their expansion depended on it. Well, it's no different today. So does ours. Eight billion people on the planet. We need to figure, we need to come to a place of unity, oneness, completion, harmony, purity, balance, goodness, in order to thrive in order to survive, thrive. And where does it begin? The choices we make with us, with each of us. That's where it begins. That is the beauty of this moment. The astro influences I want to bring up really quickly and mindful of the time. Yesterday, Sun, Jupiter, Kazemi. A Kazemi is when the sun is with another planet. They are conjunct together. And this happened, so and it's the it's the luckiest day. It's considered from an astrological point the luckiest day of the year, and it's in between these new Aries moons. So we got the new astrological year, the new commencing uh, as of March twentieth. That was the the solstice of the equinox. Um, so we're in between these two new moons that are going to occur in Aries at zero degrees and twenty nine degrees. Unity, oneness, completion. It's rare that you have two new moons in the same sign. This month, or this at this moment, we do. This Sun Jupiter Kazemi, this wow, the sun, the life force and everything with Jupiter, the 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 major benefactor together. And that degree so coincides. So you look at it, it happened at 21 degrees Aries. So you in the Sabian symbols, you would advance them one degree. And so it's 22 degrees. And it says, the gate to the garden of all fulfilled desires. So it's the gate to the garden of all fulfilled desires. Abundance made possible by human togetherness and cooperation. You cannot make this stuff up if you tried. <laughs> they give us the story. They give us the what's what's going on. And then they say um, that this degree, this symbol, symbolized by the prize fighter, or I'm sorry, uh, the symbol is apparently wide open and effortless fulfillment. Alone, a human being can barely survive in nature's great life drama. In organized groups, humans can, in due time, fulfill their desires. The abundant life is, in theory, open to all. At least this is the ideal, the great dream. Remember, the ideal becomes the new reality. Together, together, humans together, 
soul source connection together, anything's possible. The gate to the garden of all fulfilled desires. It's open. And it says the goal of happiness dominates the consciousness of cultural humankind. Like American New Thought, this glorifies a social feeling of abundance. And it talks about cosmic optimism, a cult of success. So it's a, it's a belief. It is a belief. It's also a reality, but it's a belief. Celebrate, celebration, all that we've talked about in this hour. It's culminating in this great possessing, shine, this coming together, not just within yourselves, within your nucleus, your familial and, and work lives and societies, and and surely and most importantly, to our soul. Come back into harmony or return, move forward to the celebration of your unity with the host, your soul source connection. That, that brings about, and it's number four and it's the last piece. They said the living waters. And typically it's water, the living water. They said the living waters and, and they meant all, all waters. And water is the Holy Spirit. So think about this from a standpoint of life-giving force. Holy Spirit, life-giving force, water, literal water. I'm talking about oceans, streams, uh, lakes, and so forth. Water. And there's a beautiful study, um, Japanese scientist, um, I'll say it's. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll put his name in the comments. Um, I don't want to mess up his name. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyways, the point is, he took collected samples of water, and he scientifically measured them. On good water, pure water, he put negative words. On not clean water, he put positive words. Crisscrossed, you can do the same thing. Take just water, tap water, whatever. Put bad words on them on one container, put good words on the other one. You will see the spirit of the meaning. We're all energy, everything's energy. It affects the outcome. And so They're saying to us, the living waters, the Holy Spirit, redemption, forgiveness, honesty, faith, trust, being ready, be ready. Because again, we're going up an octave. And so the more um, purified, the more harmony, balance, goodness you have with self, and you got to be that first for yourself, first and foremost. So if that means putting sticky notes on and on your mirror, on your on your person, love, joy, happiness, celebrate. By all means, do it. And any story script thing, anything that you're repeating, thoughts, replace them with something. Replace them with a new story, with a new script, with a new truth. One would say the truth, which is this celebration, this abundance, this oneness with the 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 host, the master weaver, the unseen. Because it comes, we come in and together, and it unifies us, it completes us, and we have a whole new world. We have a whole new way of being. And again, as we discussed, um, um, oh, I'm trying to think. No, hang on one second. Olivia, thank you. Sorry. Olivia brought this up, that hundred month, hundredth monkey theory. There's a tipping point. We're going to tip regardless because we're moving forward. 
It's just to remember, shine, shine your light, shine together, be pure, be unified, be whole. And, you know, quantum leaps forward. We are leaping forward. Thank you all so, so much for your amazing, beautiful comments. Um, last, I want to end with this. Sorry. Alicia said, I have seen more rainbows, people posting current photos of rather than me seeing in person the last month or two than I've ever remember seeing in a short period in my life. Very hopeful. Exactly. You can see there's something about all of this abundance, the green, the poppies, these super blooms, rainbows, double rainbows. There is a tripling, quadrupling down of this celebration, of this goodness, of this unity, of this living water, this life force. Be it, be it, be it. Contribute to it. Magnify it, amplify it authentically. Just radiate, shine your light. And for anybody that doesn't enjoy it, (laughs) walk on by. We will see you next week on the 19th is the first um, total lunar, uh, sorry, total solar eclipse. It's a powerful time of change. And I love you all so, family. You make this journey so beautiful. And I am so honored and humbled and privileged to share it with you. So thank you for being here and being such a beautiful, beautiful part of my journey. I love you all. I will see you next week. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com.